information may be vital to teachers and educators when determining how to best handle the classroom setting and whether or not technology should be allowed and can improve students' understanding. We hypothesize that students who are faced with distraction will not be able to remember as many things as students who are not faced with the same distraction. We also expected that upperclassmen would be better at handling this distraction than underclassmen. So, in the past decade, many people have begun to bring technology into the classroom because it, is, it has become society's norm. Now, with this transition from books and um, whiteboards, we have transitioned into smart boards and using laptops and other forms of technology, which, though it can be an advantage to many students, can also be detrimental when they begin to multitask. One study completed about this, done by Deaton Henrik in 2014, studied how texting in the classroom affected students' scores. In this study, they split the students into two groups, where one group received texts and the other did not. Following this, they were given a quiz, and the scores determined how well they were able to remember information in the lecture, and they ultimately determined that students who were receiving text during lecture scored significantly lower than those who did not. Texting may be easier to get rid of in the classroom, though, as many teachers just implement a rule where students cannot have cell phones. Laptops, on the other hand, are harder to get rid of because they have so many advantageous aspects. So, in 2013, Risco, Buchanan, Maddie Moore, and Kingstone completed a study to test, test this theory. We based our study on this, on their study, where they conducted research having one group of students use laptops and complete tasks while another group of students just watch a video and while the other group multitask and watch the video. So following the video, they were given a series of questions regarding the content from the lecture video, and those scores determined how well they were able to retain the information, whether they were multitasking or just watching the video. And this study ultimately found that those students who were not multitasking while watching the lecture scored significantly higher than those who were. And finally, another study done by Santa Weston Zapita in 2013 found that not only does this multitasking distract the students who are involved in the multitasking or surfing the web, but it also distracts the peers who are sitting near them. Um, and ultimately shows that for all students in the classroom, use of laptops can be detrimental to their academic success. So after reading previous research in the field, we attempted to create our own study, which would determine how multitasking affects academic performance. Our study included 16 students from the University of Mount Union, and it was a two by two factorial, between groups factorial design, where our quasi-independent variable was class level, including upperclassmen and underclassmen, and our regular independent variable included distraction, where the two levels included students using laptops and students not using laptops. The dependent variable was the score on the quiz or the knowledge that they were able to retain. Materials needed for this study included the video, laptops for the students who would be multitasking, a five question quiz following to determine their memory, and a four task list for the students who would be multitasking. Now the procedure, we split the class into two groups. So there was eight students who would be using well, using laptops during the video and eight students who would not be using laptops. Following the video, each student was given a quiz and their score on that quiz would determine how well they were able to multitask during the video. So as I said previously, our hypothesis was that we would find that students who multitask during the video would score significantly lower than students who did not multitask. Our results did not support this hypothesis as we found that there were no significant effects in class level, in distraction levels, and there was no interaction between the distraction and class level. We found that underclassmen with no laptops did not differ from upper, underclassmen without a laptop in memory scores, and the same for upperclassmen, that there was no difference between those with laptops and no laptops. While we hypothesized that the scores would no show significance, we ultimately did not find this in our data. 
Our findings were insignificant and did not support the previous research because while the study done on texting by Dees and Hendrick found that texting throughout the lecture scored significantly lower than those who didn't, we did not have these significant findings. Re results from the laptop study by Risco also found that students who scored higher were students who were not distracted, which we did not find. And finally, the results, the study done by Santa Weston Cepeda found that students who were distracted or students sitting by people who were distracted all scored lower, which was also not supported by our findings. One interesting fact about the results that we found was despite the fact that there were no significant results, the means of our data showed that while there was no significance in the same level classes, that when you combine the means from lower classmen and upper classmen, the students remembered more when they were not distracted than while they were distracted, even though it was not significant. And furthermore, there were some limitations to this study, as there are in all studies. Um, more specifically, in our quiz questions, we found that our quiz questions were probably too difficult, which would impact our study, because only one out of the 16 students who participated got a score out of five out of five. So to better understand the member score, we need to make sure that students who do watch the video are able to successfully get a five out of five. We also found that there were not enough tasks that students were to complete during the distracted um, section of our study because they only had a list of four tasks which they were able to complete too quickly before the video, which um, ultimately affected their score and allowed them to do better because they weren't distracted the whole time. And finally, allowing students, we did not tell students that they were taking a quiz following the video, and so maybe telling them in the future would affect how hard they tried to pay attention and ultimately retain that information. So despite the alterations that can be made to our study, the experiment was successful in giving us information that can help make us help us use better, make better use of our time in the classroom and also to improve the study in the future. These are the right.